And hello, welcome to Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. I'm Michael Mandel. Glad to see you back watching our show because it works both ways. We can see you. We can see you. We can see you. You can see us. And that's how it's We have the technology now. Equitable. But this is our single de Mayo show. Yes, which means something like five Mayos. Mayo. May 5th. May oh. 5th, and, and for that reason, we're going to be celebrating by having a drink that has wild, nothing crazy to do. cocktails. This, this came about, we were having a gin tasting. Notice I'm not, well, I'll explain to That's you. That's not gin, Michael. I mean, gin tasting, and I mentioned that, you know, gin has flavor. It's pretty much a vodka with it's made flavorings. of juniper and other stuff. This is a vodka, <clears throat> uh, hanger one by itself. It's great, great bottle, right? Um, this is Mandarin Blossom. Uh, a favorite of like uh, so it's got a, a lot of people, Tom Levy. To it. You've had this before. Yeah, so it's a vodka, orange flavored vodka. So we were doing things like Negronis, which we made with, um, of course, gin. You just put one of those in? Uh, Is that how it works? One of each? Huh. Yes. How do you make each. this? One of each. Okay. Uh, we used Coke Americano. What got me started thinking was they had a white Negroni cocktail and it said use something with gentian. And use um, use the Lille, Lille Blanc. Coke Americano has substituted for Lille Blanc since 1983, when Lille Blanc stopped using as much quinine as it used to hmm. when it was making the Vesper. So people go to Coke Americano. Oh, was there, you, is there a quinine shortage in the world market today? Or no, what? I think they had something against putting quinine in something that is a I don't know a drink that you have while you're just kicking back. Because, you know, if you, you don't malaria, want malaria... You don't want to lose malaria. You want to keep it. This is a weird one. It's in front of Mark. Here. Oh. Um, it's Caperitivo. We found this. Yeah. It's an aperitivo made in the Cape Horn of South Africa. It is being uh, imported into California. Uh, the guy from Third Corner in uh, Ocean Beach in San Diego is importing this and is trying to figure out drinks he can make with it. This one, I think, makes it. And so you found this on your recent vacation yes. to the coast. Yes, this All right. one. I'll, I'm See, glad you go to your vacations and bring something back of you. I know, something different that you can't get here. You can buy this at Vans. You know those stores, Vans? Vans, where they sell your shoes? Is it Vans? No. Isn't it a supermarket chain? Oh, not around here. No, not here. Okay, so this is made with, I made it uh, a couple of nights ago. Okay, last night. Um, so you it, know how to do it. It was surprisingly good, but I didn't know how much I put in. So we'll see how this works, okay? Well, we certainly hear how it works. I'm shaking this. You can talk about Cinco de Mayo because it's festive. This is a festive shake. Okay. A cucaracha, a cucaracha. All right, I think it's... No, no, when it gets have, really cold, is it cold enough? Uh, yes, it is. I think we have full heaviosity. Heaviosity? And, uh, yes, so this is in celebration of Cinco de Mayo. Well, which, it's in which actually, Cinco de Mayo was, was yesterday, Friday, but all the celebrations are taking place Saturday and Sunday. It's a weekend of Cinco de Mayo. In Masia and other places around the Southland. I'll give uh, our, our host... Uh, and what is Cinco uh, de Mayo, Mike? Do you know what it is? Uh, it's the fifth day of uh, May. That's true, uh, it's, it is. Uh, well, it's when, people, it's when uh, uh, Mexico kicked out the French. That's right. It's not Mexican Independence Day. That's no. September 16th. Uh, the Spanish kicked out the French. No, it's uh, when the Mexican army defeated the French. Were they Mexican? Or? At the Battle of Puebla, which is down in Mexico, which is Puebla is now is a suburb of Mexico City. In 1862, at the same time as we were having our own civil war. They were getting rid of They were theirs? having their war. And, uh, uh, lovely color. Well, so, Caperitivo. It is. Let's see. See what it is, boss. Oh, it smells fragrant. Man. You know what? You know what does it? What do you think? Uh, coal being chilled. It's alcohol being chilled, as well as everybody loves mandarin blossom. This gives it a great herbal flavor, and this gives it that little. I wonder kick what of it would quinine. be with just plain vodka. We'll never know. It wouldn't have the orange. That's all it wouldn't have. That's true. The orange is good. It's good. It it's is got good. a good orange. It finish. opened it up. It tastes a little better than uh, the the other one I made that was with gin, but you know. Th this These will are quite nice. You. Really nice. Yeah. What do you, what do you call well, it? Rosa. It, Rosa Rodriguez liked it so much, and and she was at our house with uh, Bob Kinney. You can only get it at our house. And you get it right here on Channel 98, the Los Cruces Lots channel. of luck finding Caperitif. Or the other one. Uh, Coke Americano. You could probably get it. Feast. 
in, uh, in Tucson. Oh, I'll run right out. Okay, so. Oh, oh, you, you meant that you were kidding? I was being sarcastic. I, I thought we were going to leave and go get it because you liked it so much. Well, Coke Americano is a great, you can get that I'll go all to your over house. California. <laughs> why, why leave town? You have it. Yeah, yeah, anytime I run out of this, I make sure to get more because you can't buy it here. No, you can't, and you it can't buy not, this here. We can't. Good luck finding this here. You can't do that either. You know where I bought this? In that crazy uh, store in uh, Tier C, the uh, supermarket oh, yeah. called uh, something funny. Yes, I forget the name of it. Yes. Uh, got this. It was on sale. Uh, got, uh, they also did a, a Buddha's Hand, which is another citrus flavor. It sucked so much. I wrote the company, uh, Hanger One, and they said, well, the one you got must have been damaged. And I'm thinking if it were at the TRC store, it might have been in a hot warehouse. And for months and years. For yes. years. So they sent me a new one of Buddhist hand, and they said, and I really love your mandarin orange. So the mandarin orange is a, a great no matter what. Buddhist hand is still a little iffy, but mandarin orange, hanger one. Well, these three, three items three. right here make a wonderful cocktail, slightly sweet. So uh, did I mention Bob Kinney? He was there, too. And my wife was there, of it's course. It's good to know. And they liked it. That's good. Tom Levy loves this. Hi, Tom. Yes. Now, the reason we're drinking this is because it's Cinco de Mayo. And because and this is Double Talk and we're always, we drinking, always something. drinking something. We always love to sample things. If you watch this show, this is what we do. Yes. Um, now, have you been to Animus U lately? Uh, Animus University? Animus U. Oh, An Animus. Not Anima Zoo. Anima Zoo. The Anima Zoo. New Mexico State University. You know, over it there sounds by fun. Renfro. It sounds like it would be a relief to go to an Anima Zoo. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's the season now okay. where, the, where the Swainson's hawks have returned. They're nesting in the trees, and, and as pedestrians walk back and forth down that sidewalk, above where the they're know, protecting the, the are, eggs. They've laid eggs. They're protecting their eggs. So now the hawks are attacking people as they walk nearby. So they're <laughs> and these are protected species, so you can't do anything to them, you know. And you wouldn't want to. But they're talking about putting a camera up so we can watch. Them swoop? They, so, well, they've laid their eggs, but we want to watch the fledglings So hatch, but what happens hatchlings. is, and this is a political question, because students are not making enough money to live, and they have to eat the eggs from uh, these uh, hawks. Like I said, Michael, it's a protected species. Oh, yeah. You can't eat the eggs, yeah. and they're, they're way out of reach anyway. And those hawks will peck your eyes out. I hear you said people are wearing pith helmets and umbrellas, well, and some guy was wearing a porcupine on his head. They are, they are recommending that people wear hats or carry an umbrella. Here's what they, here's what they should Hawks do. are predators, man, and yeah. they don't care yes. how big or little your head is. If you're is. walking that direction, they should have a bin that has umbrellas to going that way. And then at the other end, they have a bin for umbrellas if you're coming this way. And when you get to that end, you put your umbrella back in and vice versa. You'd make a great say, uh, solve the problem. administrator. I that is the most complex way to solve a problem. That's just the easiest thing you can think of. Run the head like heck. And run. just get the hell out of there. People carrying books and bags, and they're busy talking on their phones. They're right? students. Who no, can run? Student. No, they're looking at their phones, right? Yes. They're looking down there. They're and looking then like, listening, you know, yeah. zap right on their head. <laughs> we'll get some video footage, and you can watch Mark get attacked we'll go out by next a week with the video footage. Swainson's uh, hawk. Swainson's hawks. These are big, beautiful hawks. Um, well, and, that is a nice bird. And actually, it's a wonderful thing that they've chosen to come to the NMSU Council uh, campus year after year. You know, and this is, the biology department should be all over this. They should have cameras on it. They should be do, making studies. The university also has the burrowing owls, too. Remember that? Sure. And, uh, I mean, we have a lot of open land. There's a lot of burrowing really owls. really nice. Yes. Well, you know. And there's water there, and it's uh, civilized. It's a wonderful place for a hawk. Yeah. So uh, we should so, call ourselves the uh, instead of the Aggies, the Hawks. <laughs> if you're out there at the university, beware of the Swainson Hawks for the next several months. In fact, they're going to be there till September. Then they fly south for the winter. They do that because they feel the students are going to be away. Well, you yeah. know, but not quite yet. So they, I think they showed up at spring break. Is that what happened? They snuck in. Oh, spring break. We went down to Mexico. They came back up here. Yes, and so they'll be here until probably around September, October. Then they make their way south for the winter. Uh, but with their with their young uh, youngins, they're young. They're they're hawklets. Hawklets, yes. Did you see that woman on TV? That well, she died. She got hit. Beat, she got bit by bees in El Paso. She was attacked by a swarm of 900 bees. They Killer bees. No, just regular bees. Well, they killed her. 
Well, they did, but that's because she was so allergic to them and was bitten all over her body. Bees don't bite, they sting. Well, it feels like they're being bitten. And Michael, that means 900 bees died. Because they, they lose their you, things. They, that kills them. Well, so they, they have to really mean it. That's true. They must have been really mad at her. You know what they say, be here now. Be mad. Okay, let's get on to other stuff. What's this? Bag well, tax. Yeah, you know, oh. the city of Las Cruces is, there are some important things is here. considering charging all people who go to grocery stores or any other kind of store a fee. If the store gives you a bag, plastic or paper, you have to pay 10 cents for that bag. Now, if you bring that bag back, do you get 10 cents back? I mean, that's how they do it with no. glass bottles no, in some states. If you show up with your own bag, then they don't charge you the bag tax. You know, if you show up with your own bag. Well, my wife is ready because she goes everywhere with plenty of things to. Uh, exactly. I take my own bags, too. And that way you don't get a pile up of plastic bags that you then have to recycle, which I do. What I find I don't is throw them away. If I wear this jacket when I go shopping, because I wear this all the time, or something like it, what you do is if you put the food in your pocket when you buy it, then they don't charge you when you walk out. Really? Yeah, because you just walk out. I figure the poor man's wearing a recycle jacket. <laughs> and so. A good picture. Two bags. So they're calling it the bag tax. So if you buy anything, California in the store, already has it. They charge and you ten cents per plastic bag. And which California really, gets great alcohol, so we should do it too. So the we plastic get bag is probably worth about uh, eight, nothing. Eight tenths of a penny, maybe. Probably. And so. But that's not the point. The point is they're trying to discourage to discourage you people from even using plastic yeah. bags or paper bags. So it's good and bad. It, it it's kind of a, a regressive tax because it hurts the poor people the worst. And if you bring your own car to the supermarket, you don't have to use one of theirs. Yes. To get home. And also, so, you know, you can buy a bag at the grocery store. They'll sell you a bag for a dollar. It holds eight times more than a little plastic bag does. And doesn't rip and it's the last one. Right. You, have, you probably have so many bags by now. You know, Albertsons, for one, was uh, giving out six compartment mm -hmm. bags for when, you, when they have their big wine sales. Oh. Those are great to have around because uh, they don't knock anything. Well, you know, Albertsons, if you bring your own bag, they give you a five cent bag refund. All right. And, uh, you know, so that you makes bring sense. in two or three bags, then you can afford the groceries. <laughs> then you could say, look, bring these in, bring these two bags in, give me five cents back, but instead of giving me five cents back, give me one of your bags. Well, you bring in, cents. Yeah, they, they give you five cent credit, but if you don't bring in a bag, they're going to charge you 10 cents for their bags. So obviously it's a difference of 15 cents. So anyway, what you whenever, all the other countries, uh, people bring their own bags. That's true. You know, America is one of the last lazy countries. Not Natural Gross is your favorite store in town. You don't even get a bag. You don't get a bag. They you get use their old boxes, which uh, actually Albertsons could do, but it would be so many boxes would be a Same with Mountain mess. View Market. There's no, there's no bags in Mountain View Market. That's true. They, they have a bit of boxes, too, just like I, Natural Grocers. I just groceries. buy a few things so I can put uh -huh. it in my armpit. Yeah. Well, you, uh, most of the groceries you stuck in your pockets before you get to the checkout stand anyway. Well, in the cold stuff, I put in my pants. Yes. Just to keep it cool. And so, uh, did you grimace there? Was that a grimace? Uh, you want grimace? I'll give you a grimace. Well, why don't you talk about divestment? <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people, well, Wells Fargo Bank, do you bank at Wells Fargo? I actually have some I used mortgages to. there, but I don't. I used to, uh, only because I was traveling a lot and they were everywhere, so it's it was national. convenient yeah. for me. I no longer do it because I'm, you know, they were, they were part of the problem with, we, with, with the big recession. They got a big bailout from the All government. Right. And, uh, and now they are. Well, they have stock and their uh, receivers in uh, companies that own, that run prisons. They do. Prisons that, that uh, well, keep, keep uh, illegals behind bars. I, I and just, so there's a lot of people who are saying, let's divest ourselves of Wells Fargo stock. Let's get out of their, uh, the banking business with Wells Fargo because they're, they basically are in the business of putting illegals behind bars or alleged illegals. Alleged. I sold my Wells Fargo stock when they had the big bruja about uh, coercing people into getting more services or giving them services without people knowing. They were charging people. Yes, they were I charging people. I figured that was a statement. Yeah, they were charging people for services that were never getting, uh, opening accounts for people who never even knew or wanted accounts with them. So Interesting. So it's a crooked bank anyway, as they've proven. Well, it was. They tried to make amends the same way as United tried to make amends with beating the guy, uh, right. Dr. Dow. But Wells Fargo is still in the business of throwing people in jail, whether they're guilty or not, whether they're illegal. In their, in their jails. Let's take a break. And uh, let's go to Wells Fargo and protest them.
No, I'd rather just have another sip of this. Yes, that's a good We'll drink. be right back after these words. Hi, I'm Cheryl Burke, and I have a confession to make. I have a serious crush on my workout. Hip, fun, and always a challenge. Jazzercise is the total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Maine. See you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors. We're buying a car. It's always a celebration. Attention homeowners, apartment complexes and business parks and homeowners associations. Now is the best time to make your property beautiful again. Since 1967, Gonzales Landscaping has offered beautiful professional landscaping services to all of southern New Mexico. Our team has been designing and installing landscapes for over 47 years. Where quality is an obsession. Gonzales Landscaping is locally owned and operated. We are licensed commercial, residential specialists dedicated to providing reliable and quality service. We offer residential and commercial landscaping design. Full lawn, tree and shrub care, with annuals and perennials, tree and palm trimming, spring and fall cleanups, mulching and more. Let us do the work at prices you can afford. We service all of Las Cruces. We are New Mexico's premier commercial landscaping and residential landscaping company. Visit us online at gonzalesnursery.com or call us for a free estimate. 575-382-7272. And we're back. This is Double Talk. Mark Seven. Michael Mandel. And, and we've been uh, tasting. Did you want this to balance it out? Or Let no? me try it just okay. as this is. Mr. Experimenter, how's that? I prefer it like this. Really? Just the two? I do. That yep. makes it really sweet, which is mm -hmm. fine. It's but, interesting. I'll have to uh, try it. This time around, I'm going to go less sweet. It, it's too early in the morning for me to get drunk. Never stopped you before. At 11 o'clock here. 11 o'clock? It's 11 o'clock Saturday. It's 11 o'clock Saturday. 11.15. 11.15. Sorry. 11.15 already. See, it's okay. Uh, we haven't talked news or anything controversial yet. It's now we're going to talk some controversy. We are? Well, voting is always controversial. <laughs> yeah. Do I vote That's or do I not vote. vote? Right. Do I want to bother going there? Did, you, know, you, did you vote? I did vote. I All voted right. at uh, uh, Good Samaritan. Uh, there was a thing at Good Samaritan. It was very easy. I don't know if they counted our votes because uh -huh. they probably forgot about them. We should put up the vote, uh, the vote graphic. Do we have the vote graphic? Well, that's a graphic of uh, Kevin Bixby. It's one of the guys. There it is. Yeah, voting. There was a, there was a vote on Tuesday. Uh, I think uh, so, oh, I got little, little over 3,000 people voted, Michael. And they consider it good. And one of yeah. the reasons is because... When you have a vote that has one topic only, nobody cares. They say it's not important. Why bother? But soil, water, conservation, you know, having uh, people like uh, Kevin Bixby and uh, the Fensky guy. Gary Fensky. That's him. Well, uh, soil and water go. is pretty much all we have here in New Mexico. Yes, because there are many trees. And so somebody's got to look out for that stuff. And I'm I can't sure. think of anybody better than Kevin Bixby. Who's been working with the uh, environmental Well, I know. Fensky, I don't know. But he won also. There's and, two districts. All right. In town, it was Fensky. Out of town, Kevin Bixby. Anything Pep Kevin Bixby does except something that gets him in trouble with the newspaper. Well, that's fine. Uh, well, it's fine good with, with me. All right, Kevin. So the Soil and Water Conservation District. Yes. I'm not really sure what they do. They probably uh, do a lot of the stuff which allows uh, water to be released and people to do projects. Well, that's the people. district. And also people to uh, make uh, their cow poop uh, go into the water. Oh, is that thing. what they do? Yeah, I don't know what they do. But I'm sure they'll find out. Well, I don't have soil to That's why and we, water are two things that need to be conserved. That's why. We can yes. all agree on that. And, and here is a district that's all about that. Right. And I think these Desert. two guys 
uh, who have now won the yeah. election. This way, I don't have to think about. Are Kevin empowered could, to do that. Kevin can think about what he thinks about anyway, which is what the, the environment. Kevin, we should have Kevin on the show. I told him he could be on the show. Yeah. Well, he said uh, he'd be happy to. He said as long as you and Mark aren't there, I'd go. No, you should say that. I'm sure he said that. He did. No, he didn't say. That. No, he didn't say that. We like Kevin. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, we also like the TV congratulations, show. Congratulations, by the way. Yes, you two guys. I uh, can't wait to see Fensky one-on-one uh, -on -one when we talk. Breaking Bad is back in a way. I mean, we have a science teacher. The TV teacher. show, you mean? Yeah, Well, no. Not the TV show. That was shot uh, in New Mexico. This guy, John Goss. Yes. Who was a teacher both in Las Cruces and in El Paso yeah. and maybe some intermediary places. He's a science teacher. Yeah, science teacher. He says he is not like Breaking Bad. He could never make meth. He, he didn't make meth. He well, tried to make it. He was arrested for it. He was playing with it, uh, sort of an intellectual experiment, although he did take it. Now, he said. How do these people who make, the, make it in their sink at a home with all these concoctions that they come up with. Who aren't as smart as a science teacher. Who aren't science teacher. How come he couldn't do it? Maybe he wasn't at that level of chemistry. <laughs> well, that tells you how bad. Can't the, be that hard. That tells you how bad the meth teacher out there is, must be if a science key teacher can't figure out how to do it, but all these low lowlifes uh, uh, in, no. in the bathroom can make it. I understand it makes your uh, your kitchen very sooty. There's a lot of black smoke that emits. And if you it's remember Breaking Bad, oh yeah, it's very dangerous. Flammable fumes. Uh, that's why Breaking Bad, they had a trailer in the middle of nowhere, which yeah, we were. call Albuquerque. Gas masks and things? Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, that's why they took off all those uh, uh, drugs from being out there. You couldn't just buy them. You have to ask them now, the allergy drugs, because oh, there's a oh, form the, of meth. The DEA it. cracked down on yeah. all kinds of opiates and stimulants and no, drugs that it was meth drink. your doctor prescribes, uh -huh. yet you have to show all kinds of proof that you are the person who... So the guy, unfortunately, he was taking meth because he had physical problems. He had pain. And he, was, uh, he, he didn't he really make it. it. He didn't make it. Uh, it never came out good enough to sell, <laughs> which is good because they have so, some sense of pride. You know, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. But, you know, quality control. Unlike the people who will push but won't use. Right. He used but couldn't make or push. Like like you or me. We who are pushing drugs all over the place. And well, I would never. Oh, yeah, this is our drug. <laughs> this is our drug of choice. I don't smoke cigarettes. Me neither. That's oh. a drug of many people's choice. Uh, I just found out that uh, I think Bhutan is a, is it Bhutan? One of those countries. Oh, was Bhutan. In the, the Bhutanese. Yeah, they oh. are not allowed to smoke. That's true. The Smoking only country. Is not the only country in the world. When luckily, was, it's a small country for us, I, and luckily we don't live there. When I was living in Calcutta, I met the uh, high commissioner of Bhutan. <laughs> so he, he didn't smoke uh, cigarettes. He just smoked grass, right? Well, I won't tell so you what he it? smoked. Yeah, high he commissioner. Does, yeah. You don't want to just divulge certain things. Anyway, we can watch all this at uh, in the movies, right? At the movies? Yes. Yeah, I see uncomfortable seats now. Well, not quite yet. No. We're well, not gonna, they're working oh, on it. Yes, Telshore 12 is uh, remaking themselves once again. They basically made that, what, six years ago? And what? Redo, the Cinema 12. Oh, no, it's been about 10 years. 10 years? Oh, yes. Time Mike. flies. It does. At least 10 years, Mike. So there's been a lot of uh, backlash against people who say, you go sit in a movie, you watch it, you don't sit there and you start sleeping and uh, love seats, you know what love seats implies, um, and, so, and eat food. Who falls asleep at the movies? Now they want to give you more comfortable chairs so you will fall asleep? Yeah. Well, after you've eaten a big meal. A hamburger while watching the movie. So we don't know what they're doing. I mean, they do have uh, Cinema 10 tries to get you to go upstairs, get a pizza, you know, they have those things. Which you can take into the theater with you. Which, it's got to be a real mess. I mean, you have... You're eating in the dark where you can't see. You have one armrest between you to balance it on. Oops, there it goes. Yeah, well, Oops, they, they have to clean that stuff up, I guess. But I don't know. So... It seems to me like it's one more reason not to go to the movies. You know, I think people think everybody likes staying at home because it's more comfortable. And what the movies are trying to do is make a more comfortable, home-like environment. We don't want that. We don't want babies crying. I think people should get out and understand that there are social activities. Well, they should because movies are meant to be seen on a great big screen with great Dolby sound. Not on your cell phone like this. In a comfortable chair, uh, you know, and take in the whole experience. 
Uh, Actually, when they were first made, they were, you were in an uncomfortable chair and you watched a black and white movie and somebody went like this to get the movie. And it was and a people, miracle. And people w- w- walk like this because they yes. were 12 uh, shots per second. Well, that was, that was the uh, technology at the, the time. Now we have such incredible technology. They have speakers all around you, so you can have somebody talking in your ear and it's not your wife. So now we have chair technology to make the experience even better. And they're going to be serving food to you in the movie theater. They so do, how distracting that would be? Uh, like old movie theaters, the ones oh, that took over Lord. old movie theaters and tried to bring back the classics. They were doing that like in Florida and places like that where there's so many movie theaters. I, you, now you hear people chomping on their hamburgers. Oh, this is really good. That's what I want to hear when I go to uh, the movies. Chris is there, you know, he'll be eating his uh, beef burrito with red sauce. And, yes, uh, and you know what he'll be doing. His stomach will be growling. Well, we'll, we, will attend, we will attend the movies and report back on our experience. Meanwhile, I did attend Urine Town, which is actually the word urine. You're this in is a play. Town. Yes, it's it, a Tony Award-winning play from Broadway. From about ten years ago, it's being done it at the University great. right now. And uh, final weekend. It's sort of what it says. Uh, it's golden showers. <laughs> Donald Trump should love it. Yeah, I know he should like it. Um, I liked it uh, mostly. It made me a little uncomfortable in the beginning, as I told you before, because you have a lot of people standing around in front of the Your, public the urinal, urinals. and they're all like going, you know, holding their legs together and looking antsy, and I'm thinking. Is that going to make me want to pee? I mean, I'm sitting in a theater thinking, I don't want to pee. Just, go, just make sure you go before you yes. attend. One of the good things is uh, during the intermission, they don't charge you to go to the bathroom. But it was a good, oh, uh, good, it was good play. The uh, six principals S- had and- great songs. There's a good interaction between the, uh, the chief of police and who is also the narrator. So it's a famous musical. It works really nice. It won lots of From awards. Broadway. Now also, it, there's one other play in town that's opening this weekend, downtown at the Los Cruces Community Theater. The old classic, Coffin and Heart, You Can't Take It With You. A classic story. You know, that's about taxes, pretty much. Well, yes. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful... Uh, George um, S. Kaufman was one of my favorite writers. I was in, the, I was in this play in, high, in college. We had a guest director from New York come in and direct it. I had the f- was his name Herschel Zone? I had the, no, his name was Tony Giordano. Oh. I had the romantic lead. Anyway, it's an old chestnut that's been done a lot of times. Everybody look that up on YouTube. Mark Steffen, <laughs> you can't take it with you. And it's worth seeing uh, if it's a good production. Oh, and if those of you who remember the Green Door restaurant, which used to be near Lowe's Hardware, then went to uh, Mesilla, uh, Avenida de Mesilla in Maine. Pueblo Plaza. Pueblo Plaza. It now is now sh- called Urban. It's under new management. Give it a shot. They used to have the best fries. They still say they do. We'll check it out. If you see we Sarah, will. come up and say hello. That's uh, our show for the week. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Cheers. Have, have one me. of these drinks. We'll see you next week. We'll call which you can only get here on Channel 98, the Las Cruces Channel. Double talk. Best bar in town. <laughs>